culminators. I have today really America's ultimate culminator, culminator of stupid arguments, culminator of stupid threads, culminator of commies, the commie simps, Colonel Kurt Schlichter. No one, but no one better qualified either to pack heat in the streets of Los Angeles or for my money to decide who else should be allowed to, except that God, God, not Goethe, but God decided that we should have a second amendment and, and inspire the founding fathers and the respective states to make it happen. Kurt, a fine sunny California. Good morning to you. Good morning. Your, your opening statement was basically like erotic of the moment. <laughs> I just, I just like, see, this is why you are my lawyer. You are my personal lawyer. Yeah. yeah. I don't give you just, much business, but that's okay. That's the way we want it for exactly. someone like you. You know, like the like the Chinese who would uh, pay their doctor to keep them well. Do you remember that? It was always like in the, you know, the uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not in China. They pay the doctors to keep you well. I do not remember that from the Ripley's Believe It or Not. I didn't get a paper that had Ripley's Believe It or Not, but I so but I have to get the paperback books. Oh, I where they would collect them. That was you know, I really. Uh, it really expanded my mental horizons. It certainly did. And, you know, there's this whole, uh, you know, we, we really got experience with the world in weird ways by like comics in the newspaper and um, cartoons. I mean, I, I, you know, all the movie cliches from the 40s, I got yes, from exactly. cartoons. Exactly. That was my yeah. introduction to classical music. And all, the, and all the World War II jokes that we didn't get. Yes. Turn out that light! <laughs> And it ain't Wendell Wilkie. What do we think when we were seven years old and Bugs Bunny said, it ain't Wendell Wilkie. What the hell do we think? <laughs> Past the mashed potatoes. I, I find it bizarre that a guy who was literally a deputy brigade commander of 5,000 guys, a colonel, held a top secret clearance, um, actually carried guns in Los Angeles during the riots and the earthquake and the uh, fires who's been deployed two times, uh, who's also a lawyer of uh, nearly 30 years, uh, is judged uh, with an impeccable no criminal record, except for that you know, minor in possession of alcohol thing 40 years ago, uh, is uh, considered not uh, able to decide whether or not he should uh, be able to carry a firearm in Los Angeles. Let's find that uh, remarkable. Who, who is the guy who has more experience and qualifications than I do to make that decision? What is his name? What's his name? Who's the guy who's got better creds than me? Some 38-year-old freaking GS5 clerk? So the point is that you, you, you're you saying that the court has answered that question for you. Well, the court, the, no court, one. The court clarified, uh, uh, I, I think the 115-page opinion could be boiled down to, look, we told you. This means what it says. They never believe it. They never believe it. It's a, well, look, it's a Stephen Colbert argument, okay? It's for people who think they're smart but are really kind of dumb but think they're clever because they can't distinguish properly. You know, whoa, we must go, okay. Anything not written with a quill or on a Gutenberg press, is that, is that what the First Amendment's limited to? Well, no, okay. Why, why, why would argument one, you know, support, you know, why, 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 you know, just come on, stop. Also, it doesn't say, it, 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 there actually is no reference in the uh, amendment itself to any particular arms. Instead, it's the category of arms. Again, it's a dumb argument for dumb people who think they are smart. And who would know nothing about firearms but, either. But <laughs> the, the, the problem is, the amendment is so clear that you end up either sounding dumb or deliberately deceptive when you try and attack it. If you look at the dissent, and I've only skimmed it, but the dissent begins with a long litany of horrible gun crimes. Irrelevant. Well, that, that's not, as the uh, concurrence, Alito just tears that apart. But uh, it's it, okay, it, not the issue. Yes, we understand guns hurt people. That's why we want to carry them. And yes, they're misused. That's why we want to carry them. 
But that's not the issue here. The issue here is, can you bear arms? What does the bearing arms mean? And their whole thing is, well, it's a right, but it's subject to reasonable restrictions. Wait a minute. Then it's not a right. Because the whole purpose of a right is to take the, uh, 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 eliminate the ability to impose reasonable restrictions. Because reason means you're balancing. Exactly. Do you have a balance for First Amendment? No, well, they do. Don't. You know, reasonable time, place, and. But, you know. but that, that's different. Well, it, well, it, Kurt, in fact, uh, apropos your, 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 your point, this is what I tweeted minutes after the opinion came out. This excerpt from the abstract in front. Yep. Sorry, sorry if you, if we're sorry if we're making you do a little bit of work on historical analysis, but costs and benefits are that decision was made when the Second Amendment exactly. was exactly the under the idea that you do a cost. Why have a right if you're just simply going to do a cost benefit analysis every time that the issue arises? And this is just so awesome. While judicial deference to legislative interest balancing is understandable. Where was the person who wrote that during the COVID lockdowns, exactly. by the way? Exactly. It's not deference that the Constitution demands here. Exactly. The very Bingo. product of an interesting, uh, interest balancing by the people. Bingo. I show you the new blockbuster. Oh, there we are. Kurt Schlichter. Who you mean we, Kimosabi? <laughs> Explain. We there we go. I got, I got a copy. You are so, so the man. The Fall and Rise of America. Kurt Schlichter writes books. So Ron Coleman doesn't have to. I, I am promiscuous in my uh, uh, book writing. Tell, tell us about the book. Oh, you know, it's a, like I said, it's an erotic journey. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of things. Uh, I, I talk a lot about how uh, uh, America could fall, how far America's fallen, uh, how far it could fall. Uh, and I talk about what we can do about it. I, I start off in the Gulf War because I didn't know at the time, but I was at the culmination in time and space and time of American power. I was with 7th Corps headquarters. We were the unit that took out the Republican Guard, 100,000 Armored Corps. Uh, we were the guys in uh, Germany who were supposed to uh, stop the Warsaw Pact. And we got moved down there. And in 100 hours, this, this core annihilates essentially an army. I mean, obviously we had the 18th Airborne Corps and the Marines on the other side. But in 100 hours, we destroyed 36 divisions, some like 36 divisions. Just This is like a military uh, feat right up there with Kanai or any of the other ancient battles. I mean, it, 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 and when it, when the smoke cleared, literally, America was on at its pinnacle of power. No one could challenge us. The Russians, the Chinese were stunned at, the, at our abilities. They couldn't do anything like what we did. We had no chance. We were at our pinnacle of power, and I was right there at the place where it happened, and I had no idea about it for years. You mean you had no idea of the historical significance? Exactly. I didn't know that I was there at the, at the peak. And it's been downhill ever since. We had our peace dividend as Russia uh, you know, became Russia instead of the Soviet Union. China rose. Uh, we took, uh, you know, our, our, our peace dividend was deceptive. We thought history had ended. That's what Francis Fukuyama said. And uh, well, he was wrong because human nature has never changed. And, you know, we're, we're going down. I don't think we've hit bottom yet, uh, thanks to that uh, uh, crusty dust puppet in the White House. But I I'm still hopeful. I think, uh, you know, uh, to use a, uh, um, a house flipping uh, TV show analogy, America has good bones. And I think, I think we can come around. And I think we will, but it's not a sure. I think that's a. I think that you make a very important point, and I like that metaphor because I actually, I, I was on someone's stream last night, and someone asked me in the comments, 
am I optimistic? My problem is I'm always optimistic. Me too. But one of the one of the things I said was, well, th- I said two things. One was that God's in charge, and I think He's going to not let us fail. And number two, basically, what you just said, America has a way of coming through. Yes. Notwithstanding how crappy it looks from so many angles, and how social media which tends to make so much look so much worse than than it, all of it really is. Uh, that's hard to get across to people, and especially in an environment where even admiring America for its Americanness is a controversial position to yes. take. Look, uh, uh, no, I, I think you're right about America coming through. Uh, you know, God loves drunks and Americans. Uh, Thank you, you know, right? it's all, it's always the drunk who walks away from the accident, uh, and the you know look, look at look so at certainly some, if he's a Democrat, he doesn't walk away in cuffs. <laughs> well, exactly, I'd be drinking too if I was if she was my wife. Um, you you look at the the, the key moments in America, at, at, at the time the American Revolution is about to snuff at, be snuffed out, we have George Washington, who's a, 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 just an unbelievably exceptional human being. And he's the right guy at the right time. And then the country is literally splitting in two. And we get Abraham Lincoln at that moment. The Soviet Union looks like it's going to be taking over. Because you remember Jimmy Carter. And, you know, half the world's getting painted red. Back when red meant communist instead of patriot. And along comes Ronald Reagan, who breaks the Soviet Union without firing a shot. I mean, the Mujahideen fired a shot, but we didn't. Um, it looks like a you know certified communist fascist nightmare woman is about to take over this country and uh, plunge us into absolute darkness. And Donald Trump comes along, our, our, the, the most unlikely of saviors. But he did save America in a very real way. And the, the Supreme Court case today demonstrates that. Yes, right. In the most, in the most narrow literal sense, <clears throat> If nothing else, you remember all those memes, the but but my Supreme Court. Well, yeah, my Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah. Bitch. Yeah. Yes. It's important. Um, so I, I you know, I, I I certainly think that we've uh, you know, we we got a friend up there looking out for us, but that doesn't mean you know, there my 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 favorite uh, you know, uh, church cliche is uh, the guy uh, the guy on the roof is the waters rising. And he says, God, please help me. And the guy kind of says, canoe comes by. No, 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 I'm going to I'm gonna wait for God. And then the Coast Guard comes by. No, 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 I'm going to wait for God. And then he drowns. He goes, God, where were you? Well, I sent you, I sent you a canoe. I sent you, a, you know, a Coast Guard cutter. Um, look, we, you know, at some point, we got to take the initiative and do. We are not uh, created as uh, uh, pawns. We are independent agents, for better or worse. And we need to act. And we're supposed to act. That's what we're meant to do. So what do you think, what do you think uh, the average American, and the average American should be watching this, Yes, presumably is. And the average American is pretty much the average between Ron Coleman and Kurt Schlichter. I mean, <laughs> right? I, I think you're right, frankly. I mean, most people are lawyers now anyway. Well, right? I <laughs> Except certain Supreme Court justices who would appear, would appear they didn't even go to law school. Well, look, um, uh, the, the, the best opinions, in my view, are the ones that a regular person can read and go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yes. You know, so, I, what, what, it's funny, my uh, partners, is my, my best quality as a lawyer is I have a general sense of the law. So I, I can say, you know, there's probably a case that's going to say this, because that just kind of sounds like what. what that's right. You, oh, that's right. That's what you do at a certain level of seniority is yeah. you get. You, you know, hopefully yeah, this, you find someone who can find that case because you you just know how these kind yeah. of things go. And every once in a while you get one that's like completely the opposite and it's the reasoning's always shoddy and it's annoying. But and then you know that what the, that, a lot. Then you know what the task at hand is. Then yes. you then you know what the challenge is. <laughs> and the challenge now, the action that you describe, your book is has a subtitle, The Fall and Rise of America. What is now? You have written before in an optimistic vein about a comeback of America, about a re 
uh, you know, a, a renaissance of our values and our civic culture. What do you think is going to happen that's going to result in that rise? Look, I, I, I mentioned several times, I weave a lot of history in here, everything from Rome to, you know, modern stuff. But uh, I talk a lot about the Great Awakening when the, the United States was a, a giant religious revival. And I, I think we're going to see not necessarily a sectarian religious revival, but a generalized religious revival because people, look, a lot of this net leftist nonsense that we see, everything from the global warming cult to CRT, is, you know, there's a space oh. in you for God. Right. And if you, if you expel him, it's going to get filled with nonsense. And not only that, it's a fight against God. Yeah, I mean, the, the, tra the transgenderism, there could be no more profound fight yes. against God. And, you know, you don't fight against something that you don't believe in. Uh, I, I think you're correct. They, you know, the people who hate religion most are the people who've been alienated by, uh, I, I, it's not really religion, it's certainly not God, but it, it's people acting on his behalf who, who misbehave. And that, but that's a continuing theme. You read the Bible and the Bible is the story of people making dumb decisions and doing stupid things. Uh, I mean, you know, you know, and this is the, the by the way, this terrible. is the Jew, right? This is the Jewish people, the so-called smartest people in the world. Well, in those days, we were we pulled some real stinkers, you know. You so, know, and and I right now because I, I I read the Bible over and over, uh, and right now I'm in the New Testament, so I've got I've got Jesus, and Jesus is you know raising people from the dead, turning water into wine, and a lot of people are going, that's great, and other people are going, ah, I think we need to kill this guy, and it's like, okay. If he's raising the dead, maybe he's got some you ought to listen to, but they don't because they've got their own own interests and own thing, and, and they have filled themselves up. You know, uh, uh, there, there's a lot. Uh, you know, the Bible's just full of hypocritical people who who pretend to be doing God's word, and they're doing their own and pretending to. And that hasn't changed at yeah. all. Just and people it won't, don't because people we're don't. human. People, but also people don't call it God's will, they, but, they, but they call it the right side of history, or they call it, uh, you know, um, pride. Or they, I mean, they have yeah, these yeah. other gods that they make, or the, plan, the planet. Yeah, exactly. When we look, were growing up, did you ever hear, hear of the planet? I mean, I live on Earth. Man. Yeah, yeah, look, you know? everybody's going to have a God. You just, I think you just ought to pick the real one. Kurt, you mentioned, you know, sort of a generalized religious revival, and <clears throat> it's interesting that you made a point of saying, I don't know if it's going to be sectarian the way the Great Awakening was. And part of the reason I have to uh, regrettably agree with you is that so many of the major denominations have absolutely punted on religion. Yeah. <laughs> they become social, <clears throat> and this, this is both Christian and Jewish, they become social uh, activism hubs that ask nothing in terms of what does what does what does my personal conduct require what does god want from me that would be different from what nancy pelosi wants from me <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. they they have no answer to that no no they don't and i think um Unless it's what Bernie wants from well, that. I, I, I think it's very interesting that I probably have more theologically in common with you, you know, an Orthodox Jewish guy who takes it seriously, and me, a uh, Protestant Christian, which means almost by definition that I don't take it seriously enough. Uh, but we probably have more in common than I do with, uh, you know, the Lutheran pastor, certainly. But I, I, I remember I was in Methodist Church in town, and uh, we were doing confirmation, talking about you know, confirmation with the pastor and some other people. And she's like, well, we're going to take him to a, uh, you know, a, a mosque. And I said, okay, that's interesting. And I had spent a year or so in Kosovo working very closely with Muslims. I don't hate Muslims, but I'm like, should we make sure that they've got, you know, Christianity down? And somebody's, and, and there was literally someone there in front of the pastor goes, well, how do we know that we're right? And, and the pastor's kind of like, and I'm like, okay, I don't think it's too much to expect anyone else, anyone to believe in his own religion. I don't expect other people who have different religions to believe in mine exactly. Um, but I think we should believe in ours, and, and they don't even have the courage of their conviction because well, they have put, no conviction. They have no convictions, no religious convictions. It's really a 
It's a job. It's a job. Uh, it's a role. And, we, and we've seen that through history. I mean, that's yes. nothing new. Sure, that's right. The, the you thing know. is, if you, read, look, if you want a preview of everything, go read the Bible. Because it shows human nature. I, I've never read anything. And I'm not trying to be Charlie Church here. And I didn't know we were going to get a religious discussion. But I, 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 if you read the Bible, it is the best uh, illustration of human nature, I think, in all of literature. You know, you get Shakespeare too, obviously good. And obviously my book will be back, Polarize America, number three. But if you read that, you just see human being. And every time you look at what they do, you're like, that's so human. You know, that's exactly well, you know, the human beings behave. The Sadducees um, are condemned by our tradition every bit as much as they are your tradition. These were people who were in a power elite. Mm -hmm. Their only interest was in maintaining their power. Yep. They actually were a heterodox sect, and they were prepared to do anything to maintain power. Sounds familiar. It sounds familiar. I mean, it, it, it's the it's the old story. And I mean, right now in in the Jewish traditional cycle of reading the five books of Moses, the first five books of the Old Testament, as you call it, um, we just dealt last week with perceived challenges to Moses. Joshua comes running into Moses and saying, hey man, Eldad and Medad are prophesying out. Let's take care of them. And Moses says, dude, if they're prophets of God, go hear what they have to say, okay? That's what I want. I want God, you know, I can't do all the work around here. Joshua was a great man. He was jealous of his, of his teacher and master's honor and respect. But your point about more theologically in common it, it is a very valid one. There's still a lot of Jewish people who, who, who wrongly mistrust Christians. And most of those people don't have the confidence that they ought to have in their own religious beliefs because they don't really have much of it their, in themselves. If you're a believing Christian and you believe any of the fundamental Christian tenets about the founder of your religion. He was an Orthodox Jew. Yes, they call him rabbi. If he was an Orthodox Jew, that means that every Christian believes that what Orthodox Jews believe is inherently the word of God. And it's true. And, and, and it's a, it's a yeah. tradition from Moses. Well, your Reformed rabbiettes don't believe that. And you're, you know, none of your, you know, Last week on, on on Twitter, we came across somebody who described himself as a cosmic rabbi, cosmic Judaism, a rabbi of cosmic Judaism. What the hell is that? Is he like in space? <laughs> Some kind of space, like between his ears. In any event, as we, we are getting very theological, let's get a little constitutional. We talked about the Second Amendment. You, you folks are not going to see this uh, live because it's not what we usually do around here, although it would have been a good occasion to do it, I guess. But but th today was the big day on the on the Second okay. Amendment um, uh, Supreme Court uh, docket. Tomorrow should be the big day on the abortion you Supreme think Court docket. Comes tomorrow? Oh, I think so. Oh, great! I'm hosting for Bongino. I guess I know my topic. That should be fun. <laughs> Better you than me, buddy. Good lord. Let's talk about the First Amendment, though. That's supposed to be the topic of this. You know, you've heard me say this before, I think. When I ask people to be on the website, they say, well, what's it about? It's about me. <laughs> it's, about be, it's about talking to Ron It's Coleman. your slant on the First Amendment. It's my slant on the First Amendment, Funny. you see? I do everything with your so I never keep it very far. You know, my briefs from the... Oh. Because that was my moment of glory, you know. Man, that's uh, 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 followed not a shortly. Bad moment of glory. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was a lot of fun. First, the Supreme Court seems to be super doctrinaire almost. I mean, oh. on they're, they're kind of almost free speech absolutists at this point. Good. And, you know, they're in a place where I think Mark Rendaza would feel very comfortable. Do you agree with the? I, I have a number of people who become sort of regular guests of mine. Uh, one of them, regular, another, I, I, I ha I've got an episode coming up that we recorded with Michael Knowles. Oh, okay. And I had a, 
I'm, I have another one with Michael that came out last year. And of course, Adrian Vermeule. And these guys who are Catholics, their point of view is, and I'm not necessarily, a, uh, you know, adver adverse, no, averse to it, is free speech absolutism is neither what the First Amendment ever really meant, and that it isn't necessarily good for us. What's your view? I'm giving you a very broad, very broad category, but I, I, I think uh, I think free speech absolutism is good for us. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, we, we were created for the right to speak our minds. Uh, to the extent there are exceptions, you know, if you want to uh, wedge uh, child pornography in as an exception. Uh, I think it's more of a content-based thing, but if it's an exception to First Amendment, I can live with that. Uh, when you are like, as I was sworn not to uh, give up to speak secrets when I had a top secret clearance, I, 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 I can see that too. Uh, you know, actual threats, which to me, you know, I, I, I'm uh, uh, sympathetic to the argument that those are more actions than, than words, even though you use words as the medium. Um, but I think the default has to be, you can say whatever you want. And if there's some reason that the articulation of words itself becomes a crime, uh, you know, then, then I think you need, a, you know, strict scrutiny is, is appropriate. And usually if you look at it closely enough, it's not the actual speaking of the words, but, but something else that makes it the crime. That's right. So, I, so one of my other recent guests was the the un, unparalleled, bizarre and fascinating Michael and Miles. charming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, I got it. We got to grab grab him again. Uh, Count Dankula. Oh yes, I saw that. The guy who literally got arrested for saying things. Literally got arrested for saying and, things. And just, just roll that around in your head. This is this is Great Britain. This is a country uh, that, that champion free speech, and they have gotten themselves to a point where you can be arrested for saying something. And there are and, a lot of people here who think that's a good thing. And as he explained, the criterion for making the case against someone for hate speech is if the complainant is offended. Uh, well, look, if you're not free speech absolutist, you are... Uh, you are all about the slippery slope to, you know, may I please speak, you know, submit, submit what you wish to say in memo form, we'll get back to you. Uh, <laughs> there, there is, there is, if you're not free speech absolutist, you are for outright censorship, because that's right, where so, it will always end up. So, so let me put to you the question that I put to, um, uh, to, to Michael earlier this week because I had heard him commenting on the Shirtleff decision that the Supreme Court made, the, the Boston City Hall flags yes. case. And it made a lot of sense. They said, listen, you can't fly every flag except the Christian flag. The Christian flag's got to go. Sounds good. So, of course, inevitably, along come the trolls of, of, of constitutional law, the so-called Satanists. And the Satanists say... The Satanists say, oh, yeah, well, our flag, too. Our flag, too. Yeah. Now, I get it. Michael, so Michael's opinion was, F you, that's not, that's not what free speech is about. And I pressed him, and I said, all right, but you, how do you articulate that to a judge? What's, where, how do, I mean, you're right, they, it's a troll. No, it is but, a troll. That, but, but trolling is speech. They're making a political point that, uh, you know, and, and sometimes a political uh, point is just a middle finger. But <laughs> yeah, if you're going to, yeah, if, if, if you're going to do uh, flags of religion, you got to do ones that maybe you don't like. I, I get that. And, and you know, guys like me who think I, I, obviously uh, against, uh, and I think it's stupid and obvious and kind of hackneyed, but Again, if you're either a free speech absolutist or someone's making a decision about what, what can be said. Now, if it's me who's making that decision, it makes it a lot easier for me to live with. Um, 
but I will pass on that along with everyone else. And I will suck up people saying things that I really don't want them to say. I mean, you know, somebody walking around with a hammer and sickle, someone walking with a swastika, uh, this kind of bankrupt, morally bankrupt, uh, moral literates doing this, th this sort of thing. Um, but it, with the intent of upsetting people like me, people like you, uh, yeah, they get to do it. And, and in fact, that's that's one of the things that came up in the Slants case, since you mentioned it. Well, what's going to happen? People are going to are going to register all these bad words. They sure are. I actually argued, no, they sh they won't. Actually, they won't because a trademark register the the register of trademarks isn't some make believe. It, it, it isn't name. Well, it takes star. money and time. I actually it takes money and time and use. You have to have used the trademark in commerce. I'm not going to show you what the trademark is on this thing, but uh, I, I actually have it on my desk right now. Um, it, for, it looks for, like a very elaborate thing that probably costs a few bucks to get a file. So yeah, it can be. It can be. It can be very but, simple. You know, a, bunch of, uh, a, a bunch of dummy uh, misfits may decide to grab up their swastika and their little brown shirts. and. But they have to collect. use it in commerce in order oh, to yeah, get yeah, yeah. the registration. And the point is people are not going to use N-word in commerce in any place where there's any possibility well, sure of them getting stuck oh, in oh, the there, there, There's a, a very famous rap band uh, right. that, uh, and I'm well, not going to well, say the word, but it's it, it was popular 30 years ago. Right, and, but uh, they but they uh, but they stopped at the at the they stopped at the at the initial, you know at the. At oh the, no no the, no! They, well, they, in any case, uh, people people may do things. I don't like it. I don't want to hear it. You know, I go to the gym and sometimes they're playing some music, and it's using words that I I simply will not speak, um, and it annoys me. Okay, I don't think anybody should be arrested. I, you know, I have choices. I can walk out of the gym. I can ask them, hey, you want, you want to change the music to something everybody likes? Or I can just sit there and pump iron. There is a movement afoot, nonetheless, to shut us down. Yes. And you and I have spoken offline a couple of times yes. about ways to sort of ensure that we prevent that from happening. And I think... A number of people have talked about that. I'm not sure that anything has really gotten off the ground that's particularly impactful yet. You know, I think a lot of it is going to be, uh, I, I think a lot of it is going to be the understanding that uh, uh, we're going to start leveraging our political power when we've been told we can't. Uh, look at Ron uh, DeSantis in Florida. He said, well, you know, uh, Disney can participate in politics, but you can't, you can't, uh, you can't treat them like they're participating in politics. And he's like, no, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to treat them like, yeah, you, you want benefits, you be on my side. And I, I get that. That's political give and take. Um, you know, a lot of these uh, companies and institutions uh, have decided to intervene. They've intervened on the other side, and there are consequences for that. I'm not required to uh, pretend that my enemy isn't my enemy in the uh, normal rough and tumble of politics. You know, if, if, if you want benefits, you've got to get me to vote for them. I ain't going to vote for them if you're screwing with me. Um, there are, uh, if you want to participate in politics, I'm not going to send cops to arrest you. But don't ask me for a tax break. You're not getting it because you told me to screw myself. Right. And, and I think that, that this is where it gets interesting because in America, we're not talking about people being arrested no. unless, although I do no. think it is, I do think it's possible that people could be arrested next time they decide to, to take the opportunity of a pandemic to clamp down on rights. Or how about climate change denialism? See, it's always an emergency. Yeah. This is an emergency. Right. We can't be we can't be trapped in this whole thing about procedure and right. Right. It's an emergency. Remember, you have F, to give me more F power. your constitutional rights. F your constitutional rights. You know, uh, I, I want to thank that uh, uh, hack from Rhode Island for making the case 
uh, for the right of an armed citizenry uh, better than I did in my new book, in the chapter on it, we'll be back, The Fall and Rise of America. Um, F my rights, you know, people have, you know, I, I took an oath to die for the country and it wasn't to the, it wasn't to the president. It was, you know, to the constitution, to the United States. Rights matter, rights are things you die for. And I, I think one of the things is, this is my trust fund theory of America, trust fund theory. Everybody know Henry Ford, right? Not a great guy personally, but created the uh, created a huge organization, created the assembly line. Great guy in that sense. His heir, a, a titan in, of history, a, a titan of history. So he was so a crank with kind of respect to certain of views. Um, okay, that's his, not my problem. His his kids, you know, took over the company, gave us the Mustang. Did a pretty good job. Name a third generation Ford. They're all rich. Many of them are in, uh, you know, <laughs> Lincoln Continentals parked outside of crack houses. <laughs> Trust fund kids tend to squander it because they didn't earn it. They didn't build it. They have no other interest in it other than what they get out of it. It's not theirs. They don't appreciate it. And I think we have a ruling class. It's essentially a trust fund ruling class. They didn't fight World War II. They didn't survive the Depression. They didn't go through the civil rights or they didn't put a man on the moon. They gave us grinder. You know, this is, it, these are not accomplished people. They are, uh, it, you know, uh, a third generation Ford became a Ford by accident of birth. A lot of these guys did it because they got admitted to Harvard, which is the last hard thing that they achieved. And then they move right into their uh, uh, institutions and they have no understanding of the institutions or its place or why it's important. And they have no hesitation to use it for their own purposes. And I spoke to a GC of a software company who had who told me about discussions he's having in boardrooms and observing what's happening in the big national law firms and how the people who run those firms who are guys my age and your age, yep. they're fine signing off on all the woke stuff in the ESG, is it ESG? Uh -huh. All those programs and hiring, I'm gonna say it, unqualified people. Yes. To meet, to, to meet quotas and to do, to, they're fine with that. Why? They're already set. They're retiring in 10 years as multi gazillionaires. Yep. They don't, the institutional continue, continuity is of no interest to them whatsoever. They're taking from the system, they're not giving back. And that's, that's exactly this phenomenon you're describing as it plays out in the corporate world and in the law, the corporate law firm yep. as well. No, that's, that, that's absolutely true. Um, I think we're going to see some pushback. I think, um, yeah, that's what I hear. I hear there are things in the works. Uh, well, look, Elon Musk firing through, wrote a letter. We think you're, we think our boss is racist. You're fired. What? You're, you're fired. You can't work here anymore because I'm not going to have you trashing it. Even the Washington Post was forced to, uh, uh, to, to fire the future cat lady. Uh, the, the idea, I got to tell you, the idea that some uh, uh, punk is going to come in and tell me how it's going to be with a sense of entitlement. Not going to play. And um, I, I, I think, you know, I, I, I think a, a lizard brain survival instinct on some of these folks will come into play. Uh, others, like uh, academics, uh, you know, they've been cowards for 50 years. That's why Hayek Cowell was the exception, you yeah. know. Uh, that's why he became a senator in California. All these others roll over, you know, especially in red states. A lot of these college uh, administrators are going to have a bunch of uh, folks like you and me who happen to be in office go, listen, dummy, I'm not giving you a cent for your stupid college because you guys are walking around calling us racists and you're, you're not educating people and you're persecuting uh, my constituents. So I'm going to give you nothing. So you got a choice. Who's worse? The, 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 the punks who are coming to your office, who you could clean out in a minute if you just told your cops to, or me, who's got the purse strings? Because suddenly everyone's paying attention, everybody's watching, 
and you have you're all out of friends <laughs> all out of friends yeah kurt schlichter ladies and gentlemen he'll be back <laughs> buy the book before the movie comes out this is it's going to be uh wild times america you and you give i assume it has recipes in the back oh many of them uh, and they're, they're all very, very simple in accordance with my uh, cooking style. <laughs> Are you still, last time I heard you, you were eating like a caveman. Uh, yes, yes. I had uh, barbecue beef, uh, beef ribs last night, uh, which I sous vide for 24 hours. And then I uh, seared them and uh, put my little sauce on them and they were delicious. You do the cooking in, in Schlichterville? My wife is in Paris. Ah, so that's cool. It's all me and my kid. Oh, He's okay. There so my no, daughter. Must be nice to be, uh, you know, a a, a pretty uh, 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 young adult in uh, Paris during the spring. I don't know. Is Paris still Paris? And any Paris meaningful? burning? And on that note, Kurt, thank you for culminating with the Coleman nice Nation podcast. I love it. You and I will uh, continue to uh, be back and to. Fight back and hit back, uh, and no one will ever say of us that we've got back. That. That's... <laughs> I like big briefs, and I cannot lie. <laughs> and on that note, council may deny. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. Of course you don't. Okay. Well, it's See been ya. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt.